Is this thing on? Okay, there it goes. Well, uh, here we are. Manic Monday. <clears throat> I know it's a little bit early. I figured, you know, I'm here. I'm in front of the computer. What am I waiting on? Yes, I got out of bed without my oxygen on. Keep your panties out. <laughs> and don't worry. Don't get up in arms. <coughs> I'm going to be okay. I just, I can't, I can't do it all the time. I can't have that on me all the time. It just drives me bananas. You try to put something up your nose all the time. Well, it's not up my nose, but. Oh, I can't have that all the time. I need a break. It'll be, even if it's only... Anyway, uh, I'm yammering. A lot's been going on this week, hasn't it, ladies and germs? Oh, dear God. Where do I start? I don't even know where to start. Uh, this is why I need to write things down in a format and stick to it. Because if not, I go everywhere. Okay, so, ground base. Okay, my favorite. We just deployed... A bunch of military group, well, more military than what's been already deployed, down to the borders. This happened, I think, Sunday uh, afternoon, Sunday evening. Yeah, while well, the rest of us was watching the Rams lose. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we're not going to go with that one My, um, while that was going on. More troops been deployed to go to assist the border security. And uh, I already see what's going on. Um, up to now, a lot of the things I've noticed I've been saying, they're pretty much spot on. So, this is my prediction for the next two weeks. There will be... Um, a bill drawn. Both sides will come to an agreement. There will be no money for border wall because they don't work. That huge bus of fentanyl was on a truck. Okay. And it was busted at a port of entry. What did I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? Does anyone listen to me? No. <clears throat> anyway. Walls don't work. We know that. So that's supposed, these troops are supposed to deploy, be deployed, and assist border patrol. What we need is more manpower at the border entries. And here's, you know, oh, dear. Put a pin in it. Go over to the left with me for a minute. We'll come right back here where this little tack is. Walls don't work. We know this because we've already built some. In 2004, now I'm not going to get pulled. <laughs> I'm not going to name names here. But do you remember who was president during 2004? Okay. Um, a section of the wall was built. Uh, let me, I've written down notes so I don't get this wrong. Yes, I do write down notes on some things. It was it was 14 miles from San Diego to Tijuana. Okay. So here it is. These, this wall was built. It was started in 2004. It was completed in 2006. And it was a secured fence. Now we've already seen what it looks like. It looks like a bunch of slats. And the kids put their arms through. So they could touch their parents on the other side because they're no longer allowed to go back and forth. <clears throat> oh, and that's who I need to talk about. But anyway, um, so there is construction per se going on at the southern border during those 14 miles. And it's maintenance. That's all it is. It's just maintenance for those 14 miles. Now, that 14 miles of fencing, border security, wall, whatever you want to name it, dear God, don't name it peaches. How, 
it was um subcontracted you know those people that got gypped on all their income for January it was sub subcontracted out so there was a construction company let me move you this way that oh that looks a whole lot better doesn't that look better I think it looks better anyway uh, they they subcontracted out the company the construction of defense to a company and you never guess what happened you never guess why don't you dare get ahead of me I see those wheels turning don't you dare get ahead of me 2006 the contractor was dubbed completed because turns out that the contractors don't you dare don't you I, I say it first I say it first then you can laugh okay first I say then you laugh illegal citizens were hired to construct the border fencing from San Diego to Tijuana you may laugh you done laughing okay that is why we know that it don't work okay walls don't work why are people from South America Central America Southern America I don't know pick an America okay anything below Mexico <laughs> um, why are they coming up here that's what we should be asking why are they coming up here well we like cheap produce uh, when an apple we get a bag of apples for three dollars and we give the former three dollars for his bag of apples when we get at the store and that means that that farmer to make any kind of profit has got to keep his overhead at a dollar at most per bag how do you think he's gonna do that oh yes my little chipmunks I see you're all <laughs> you're all coming together yes you hire illegals yes you know why because no American will work for 35 cents for a bushel to pick a bushel of apples that's all they get they get 35 cents that was three years ago it must have been up to 45 cents now because apples are to go a little more expensive anyway well at least the fertilizer <laughs> there's so many jokes right there anyway so if we want to pay to hire Americans and pay them a living wage a livable wage we are looking at probably two to three dollars per apple for one apple okay yeah that's why we hire illegals because they do slave labor we would never you wouldn't come on you're gonna bend over picking lettuce and strawberries and all these other kind of berries that we get for three dollars a packet or or buy one get one free but the strawberries I remember those in the spring I loved it and I ate them and they were beautiful to get that much strawberries for that little money but you see if you're buying one and getting one free that means that one price you pay gotta be split in two okay so if you pay five dollars for two things of berries that's two dollars and fifty cents per carton that means that the farmer's got to keep his expenditures around 75 cents per um, container. You see where the math is. I don't know how much you get paid for picking strawberries. I know you got made bent over for hours on end. Because to raise the, the, the beds up to where you could just pick them nicely, that costs money. And we can't do that. No. So about that, if you want illegals to quit coming over, go after the people that hire them. Yes. Oh, yeah, now we got to do some real legislation. 
Yes. It's just, you see, all that got into me because um, it, I don't want to say his name, but 45 indicated that, you know, of, that the walls work. No, they don't work. They don't work. Because we hire the illegals to do the job that we don't want to spend the money for. But no, they don't work. And the caravans are coming again. <laughs> that That's his new thing. Uh, it's, it's third, I guess this is the third wave of caravan coming in. <laughs> yeah, a few thousand people are going to take over 300 million. I see that happening. Uh, anyway, uh, another thing... Um, now, I'm kind of afraid on, and it's kind of a, I don't know why I've taken this so personally. Let's see, today is one, two, three, four. That means this Wednesday will be the sixth. There's a little bitty church, and you might want to look this up. It's called La Lomita Mission. Of course, you know how everyone else has been La. Lomita, L O. M I T A mission. Uh, the Trump administration is taking them to court on February 6th so they can uh, condemn the land that this church is sitting on. If they can condemn, if the administration can declare the land condemned, they can then buy it up and put the wall in right through the church. The church been there 120 years. It was erected in 1889? Something like that. Let's see. No, it would be 1899, wouldn't it? Because it's 2019. Now. Yeah. Wow. That's a long time. That's 120 years old. And right now, it's part of America. It's on America's land. Uh, but you know how I told you that if they was to build the wall, they've got to the geographical line is down the middle of the river. There's no border border. Well, they figured out a way. They're going to build the wall along the river bank. You may think, okay, well, that won't cause flooding. Well, that means that all the wildlife on the part of the wall that's cut off from the river is now going to have to find water from elsewhere. Meaning they're going to have to go in town. They're going to have to invade the ranchers, you know, that's in that part of in that region of the country I just don't think it's fair that you should take over a little bitty church just because but oh dear God. okay getting back to what I was saying before I got on my little rant about this one of two things is going to happen where the Democrats and Republicans are going to come to an agreement they're going to say this is what everyone agrees on and, of course, Trump's going to blow it out the water. No wall, no money, you know, no deal. So he'll reject it. At that point, we can go ahead and override his veto. But that's going to take a 70, uh, 70 senators are going to have to vote yes for the, the new bill that comes out this Friday. That will veto it veto proof the bill if they get 70 but it has to be 70 so if you are in a state that has a republican governor you better get on them because i'm gonna be on grassley he needs to vote yes this friday all about governors not the governors all about senators need to vote yes for the bill that's coming out we need 70 of them. This is not a drill. This is not warm up. It's now and ever. We've got to get 70 votes. Count. Learn to 
account. We got to call these people. They are there to represent us, not the other way around. With that said, if we do not get 70 votes in the Senate to veto proof the bill, at that point, my prediction is Trump will call a state of emergency. Okay, so I see that happening next week on the 15th. It won't happen till the 15th because he's a reality show. He's going to be dangling that tension as long as he can. And the problem is that people get tired of reality shows and change the channel. But we're not going to go there yet. Um, he won't call it because he's used to being a reality show. Carry on the tension. Carry on the suspense. He'll reject it. He'll go for the, for the state of emergency. One or two things can happen at that point. One, it'll be tied up in the courts. It could be tied up in the courts for months, if not a year or more. Because if something is an emergency, you do something right away. You don't sit around saying, gee, my house is on fire. Is this an emergency? Should I call the fire department? No. You call the fire department you don't sit around debating it so it's obviously it's not an emergency so it'll either be taken to court and knocked down because it's not an emergency or Pelosi can force the Republicans hands and make them take a vote to for or against the state of emergency of to go with Trump all they need is a majority. They don't need 70. They just need the majority of Republicans to tell Trump, no, you're not going to do that. So those are the two ways that can go. The Republicans are hoping, and I know they're hoping this because they're chicken. They don't want to put their hands on anything. So what they're going to do, they're going to hope that he does that Trump does call for a state and emergency. It will be picked up by the courts. The courts will knock it down. Trump's like, I tried. The courts stopped me. The Republicans are like, we tried. We didn't stop them. And the Democrats are like, Oop. you know, what can I say? We're not good at winning. <laughs> we never have been, and you know it. We're great at losing. Terrible at winning. But anyway, uh, I think... I think Pelosi's going to try and make those Republicans own something. Something they haven't done in years. They've been great at passing the buck. They've been great at placing blame, placing blame on other people. But they have not done very well at putting their feet to the fire. And I hope that Nancy does make them um, take that vote. I do. Also, another thing, if Trump does get away with the state of emergency thing and nobody tries to stop him in the party, when there's a Democratic vote, a Democratic president in, and he doesn't get funding for his projects, all he has to do is call state of emergency. That works both ways. So the Republicans, oh, <laughs> I found more of these. Republicans are going to have to think real carefully uh, about, you know, letting Trump get away with that state emergency nonsense. Because that blade does work both ways. Just like that, that so-called wall that he wants to build. That can work both ways, too. Yeah. Not only does it keep others out, it'll force you to stay in. <laughs> but that's, that was a previous video as well. Anyway, I found these at Walmart. Well, Walmart was it? I think it was. They were on sale, and that sale's been... I've got a bunch more. Oh, we're going to find out a bunch of these. So, before I get it all... I think this one is Series 4. And, oh, I got another one, yes. And this one is Series 3. It's a unicorn. Ain't that cute? 
It's those little smooshies. The, the smooshies, hold on. This I opened last week. Yeah, that one. And I'm not sure if I showed you the monkey properly. I don't remember. I was too busy yammering around. And you know when I get yammering. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if I showed you that, but that's the little monkey. So he's season one. I found that out. Oh, and it smells like grape. Oh, God, that smells delicious. And I'm just getting a bunch of these together. I don't want to just give out one at a time. So, I think this is all for the Smooshy series. And that means, Danielle, and this is for your little girl. Or is it Danielle? It's one of those. I've known her for months, almost, what, almost a year, and I still can't remember your name. Oh, well, that's okay. Talk to, talk to Tracy. She understands, like, horrible with names. Great with facts, horrible with actual names. All right, so what we have here. Let me lower you a little bit. Let me sit up a little bit so we can get this. Yeah, so that's what's been going on in my mind. I just, I love the wall. I'm sorry. There's that little, oh, it looks like a little miniature. So everyone gets a miniature of that big one. That's cute. Okay, that is what I'm looking at. Okay, so. Ooh, oh! Oh, he's so cute. What is that, a mouse? Is that a mouse? It's smookies. I can't tell if it's a mouse. I'm just going to have to see. And hold on, hold on. He's got a little, what's that, cuppy cake? Oh, he's got cupcake on his head. That's adorable. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know what it smells like, but it's, <laughs> it's so delicious. So, yeah, you know, it comes with a sticker and a name tag is in there. There's the name tag, and the bottom is the sticker. And here's the a checklist. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm really into the wall, and I'm sorry if I keep boring everyone. I will try to pick up other subjects. But I live there. And it's like, you know, there's, until you live there, I mean, there was, there were things that I found out when I lived there that were, oh, see. That birth certificate. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, I think you you making your own stories about you squeaky. Anyway, until I lived there, there was so much I didn't understand. I'm like, that is not how things work. And I was, and I got a chance to ask people, well. You come in and you take the welfare. You get welfare, you get HUD, you get all these uh, Medicare and all this other uh, funded stuff. And that's when I was informed if you put illegal information, if you put falsified identification into the system, that's how you get popped. And why don't you ever see homeless Mexicans you see homeless everyone else why don't you see homeless Mexicans in Texas or homeless Spanish people in general well of what I was informed uh, Spanish culture is very family oriented which I already know because my father is from Puerto Rico and I need to touch on that for a minute too but and you don't turn people, you don't turn your family away. It's just the bottom line. It doesn't matter if it's a cousin, half cousin, cousin twice removed, whatever. If it's a family member and they have no place to stay, even if they're sleeping on your living room floor, you don't turn family away. And yes, my dad immigrated here. He was on um, 
the Baby Moses Project was back in 1930s, 1940s, something. And the children of certain areas were allowed to come to the mainland. And so my grandmother, his mom, put him on the plane and he was put in foster care and he was in the States. Uh, so he was raised here. I am second generation or first generation born here. Uh, I do not know any Spanish. I have cousins I never met. Um, of course, um, my grandfather on my mom's side uh, came over what when um, when Mussolini was doing his little thing with Europe and and my grandfather's like we need to get out of here so I don't know any Italian either um, I've always spoke English only read English only understand English <laughs> So, for both parents to come from other places, or heritage from other places, um, you can see how easily it's lost. Uh, on my dad's side, because my mom's side, I'm too far removed from my overseas heritage. But on my dad's side, I cannot understand. The people that I have contact with, can't really understand them unless they know English because I've lost the language uh, when people are like oh DACA kids and they start speaking Spanish trust me <laughs> there's a lot of DACA kids that I come in contact with they don't know either <laughs> so the language is the first you lose so I, I am proof it does happen and I'm sorry I took up all that time but I really want to clarify that you do lose your language and I am proof that you do lose it and I've seen other kids that have lost it too but moving right along now back to my little squishies <laughs> um, that is Marla Mouse Peta Pet Peta Pet hmm it says P-I-T-A. So what is the, the little mousy's pet? Oh, that's adorable. It's a petty four. <laughs> oh, that's cute. It's overexposed to. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Looks like a little teacup. What that little? Oh, it's so squeaky. I've got to get, oh, here we go, there we go. Okay, here we go. All righty. Okay, so you put, there are two, yeah, there are two little chains in there, one for this one, one for the big one. So you can attach them to your, to your um, key rings, to your, uh, if you have a purse or something, kids can attach it to their book bags. So, that's going to be cute for some little girl, I know. <laughs> Alright, let's see what the other one is. Okay. Yeah, but that's why I'm so obsessed with it. I think I'm going to let it go for now. Because um, the primaries are getting ready to start. And Iowa are the first people to caucus. I think we got next year that we're going to start caucusing. Some people have, um, I don't know if you know what a caucus is. I need to get this open. That's what I need to do. But, oh dear, 
Where is that? Oh, <laughs> excuse us. <laughs> Okay, I need to get the scissors, and they were behind the computer. All right, now you are, you are there. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a long one, too. Yeah, big old scissor for a teeny tiny toy. You think I would get this done, but I wanted you guys to see the, how cute the wrappings were, and Oh, these are so adorable. You see, I'm nosy. I got to see what's in these. and They're so inexpensive when they're on sale. <laughs> and I have this adorable little girl that I know would just love these. And she loves getting them. I love opening them. So we've got a little thing going on. All right. So there's the unicorn top. And I've got a unicorn, I think, I assume. Oh my god, it's squished. It's squished. Oh, it's deformed. Oh, poor thing, it's deformed. Okay, so there's... There you go. See how it's deformed? It's poofing up. Oh. Yeah, but you can see, like, right there. Is. There's the indentation. Oh. oh, I hope you poof out by the time I give you to this little girl of mine. Oh, I wouldn't say mine, because she's not my little girl, but she's a little girl. I give these all these squishies, too. Okay, I'm poof, I'm poof. All right, so. I don't think these are going to go with that. Because it's a different, um, different series. So let's open up this series and find out who that is. Because now I'm curious. Okay. If you guys know any other topics or something you want to add go on and add it in. oh that's so cute your squishy unicorn name all right there you go there you go okay you got your squishy unicorn name okay so uh shirley would be what's that honey Let's see. Honey, so what month were you born? Okay, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was... Okay, hold on. The first letter of your first name, then the first letter of the street you live on. So what is the first... I object. What happened if your street you live on is a number? I would say if it's a four, then it's F. Okay. Okay, so. But that's it. Oh, okay. And the Unicorn series is only four of them. And we got that little, what is that? A cat? Libby Llama? It's a llama. Oh, that's so cute. And it shows a toy to come with. I think. I don't think it's... I didn't want to know the toy it came with. Oh, I want it to be a surprise. So much for a surprise. Yeah, there's the... There's the bag. It has the... But if you hold it up to the light the right way, you can see right through it. <laughs> so much for the surprise. Okay, and then we have a latte. Okay, well that's cute. Let me put all this back. I don't think I want to put him back right now. I think I want to give him time to poof. 
So we're going to put you there. We're going to clean up. Mm, excuse me. I'm going to clean up here. So, yeah. People that normally come over, brought over as kids, born here, second generation or whatnot. Even though your parents speak a different language. Um, you also have to understand when my uh, when my grandpa, when my father was growing up, um, it was like you adapted to this life. I mean, I was like, my, I say, you know, my parents are trying to make me a true American in every sense of the word, as in, you're going to speak English, you're going to understand English, you're going to learn English, and... I'm not saying that I'm any truer than anyone else, but that's just the way it was. I mean, the self-identity is actually a new concept because when I was growing up, it wasn't even there. You know, you move to a different, a different country or a different, you know, culture, you just, uh, that's the culture you took on. That's what you learned. That's how you read and the things you did was just all around that new culture you moved into. This, All this preserving your heritage, that is a new concept. It's a lovely concept. You know, considering that now it's like with the internet, oh jeez, with the internet, everything is so small and it's just shrinking every day. Um, before... You know, I, I feel like my mom or my grandma now, it's like when I was young. Oh, yeah, I'm doing that when I was young, bull. You know, when I was young, it, it wasn't that way. But then again, we didn't have the internet or we didn't have emails. I mean, the thought of taking your phone with you was inconceivable. Well, it wasn't inconceivable. It was just very, very expensive. Because you literally, you have to pay for the tower to follow you around in your car. You know, if you got a mobile phone, and that you give up the trunk of your car. Because that's how big the apparatus was to support the signal. Now everything's in like a little bitty matchbox, and you sneeze the wrong way, you lose the matchbox. <laughs> anyway, what's up with this? Oh, yes it is. So... That was just the way it was then. You didn't teach your children multi-languages. You, you just taught them English because they wanted them to be a good American. Um, I wish I would have kept it now that I think of it. Because with the world becoming smaller and smaller, having multiple languages helps. You know? Um... Jeez, I hope we get together. I really do. Because we are not alone. We are not. No, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, copyright. I don't have copyright infringement. I don't have copyright on that song. And I am not paying anybody to use it. Because I can't afford it. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't mean to run so long and talk about nonsense. But this is how I, this is how I keep from going to the therapist. <laughs> so I'm glad if you stuck around this long with me I do thank you very much um, all I can say is we'll chin up we'll get through this together hope for the best prepare for the worst I guarantee you we'll, we'll end up somewhere in the middle you have a great day